In this lesson, we are going to study ellipse and their graphs. What is an ellipse? An ellipse is the collection of all points on the plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points, called the foci, is a constant. So this means that if you get a point P on your ellipse and you get the distance of this point from the first focus, you add it with the distance from the second focus, this sum has to be always constant. You can generate your own ellipse by using two pins, a pencil, and a string, just like as follows. Let us look at the parts of our ellipse. Suppose that this is your focus, your first focus, and your second focus. The major axis is the line containing the foci. The center is the midpoint of the line segment joining the foci. So in this case, this is our center. The minor axis is the line through the center perpendicular to the major axis, so this one. The vertices are just the points of intersection of your ellipse and the major axis. So in this case, these are our vertices. Here is the equation of an ellipse with center at 0, 0, foci at negative C0 and C0 and vertices at A0 and negative A0. Let us consider the point A0 and let's look at its distance from the two foci. The distance of this point from the point C0 is equal to A minus C. And the distance of this point from the second focus is... A minus negative C. So that's A plus C. So therefore, the sum of the two distances is A minus C plus A plus C, which is equal to 2A. This 2A here is the common sum of distances from the focus. Let us consider the equation when x is equal to 0. When x equals 0, this becomes y squared over b squared is equal to 1, which means that y squared is equal to b squared, and hence your y is equal to plus or minus b. Hence, you have the point 0b and 0 negative b. So this point here, must be the point 0B and negative B. Let us get the distance of this point from the first focus and the distance of this point from the second focus. Take note that the sum of these two distances must be equal to 2A. However, this is an isosceles triangle, so therefore, each of these should have length of A. If you now look at this right triangle here, this one has length B, this one has length C, and it has a hypotenuse of A. So therefore, it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. That is why you have A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. This is the relationship among A, B, and C. Notice also here that your A determines your major axis. Since A here appears along your variable X, the major axis will be a horizontal line, in this case your X axis. If your A appears with your variable Y, your major axis will be a vertical line. So in this case, your Y axis. So thus, this is your A, negative A, this is your B, and negative B. In both cases, the endpoints of your minor axis will always be B units away from the center. Let us identify the center, major axis, foci, and vertices of this ellipse and graph it. So first, let us identify our A, B, and C. 
25 is bigger than 9, so therefore that is our a squared. b squared is 9. c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So that's 16. So we get that a is 5, b is 3, and c is equal to 4. Next, let us determine our major axis. Since A appears with your variable X, our major axis is a horizontal line. So therefore, it's the X axis. The vertices will always be A units away from the center. So from the major axis, 5 units to the right and 5 units to the left. The endpoints of the minor axis will be B units away from the center. So this is 3, negative 3. These four points will now determine your ellipse. This is our ellipse. Let us just identify some of the parts. Our vertices are 5, 0 and negative 5, 0. What about your foci? Your foci will always be along your major axis and it's C units away from the center. So therefore, this is 4 and negative 4. These are the points 4, 0 and negative 4, 0. Next, let us identify again the parts of our ellipse here. Since we want to write it in our standard form, we have to make sure that the coefficient of x squared and y squared will just appear in the denominator. If you have a coefficient in the numerator, you write this as 1 over 9. So how do you put that in the denominator? You just get its reciprocal. Then let us determine our a, b, and c. 1 is bigger than 1 over 9, so that's a squared, b squared is 1 over 9, and c squared is a squared minus b squared, so that's 8 over 9. Hence, we get that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1 third, and c is equal to square root of 8 over 9, so that's 2 square root of 2 all over 3. Now that we have identified our A, B, and C, let us identify our major axis. Our A appears with a variable Y. That means that our major axis is a vertical line. So in this case, that's the Y axis. Let us now locate our vertices. It's A units away from the center. So this is 1, negative 1. And B is one-third, so that's one-third and negative one-third. This will be the four points of your ellipse. Let me just write that down. Our vertices are the points zero, one, and zero, negative one. What will be the foci? The foci will just be C units away from the center and it occurs along the major axis. So this is 2 square root of 2 over 3 and negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. Our foci are the points 0, 2 square root of 2 over 3 and 0, negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. Suppose that our ellipse is now centered at HK. So just like what we did with parabolas and ellipse, this would just mean that we have a horizontal translation of H units and a vertical translation of K units. Hence, your original X squared over A squared plus Y squared over B squared will now become x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared all over b squared. Similarly, if a appears with your y, this becomes y minus k squared all over a squared plus x minus h squared over b squared. Remember that k always goes with y and h 
always goes with x. Take note that if your center is no longer the origin, the vertices will still be a units away from the center and the endpoints of your minor axis, these two points, will still be b units away from your center. Moreover, your focus will still be along the major axis and it will just be c units away from the center and c units away from the center here. Let us identify the center, major axis, foci, and vertices of this ellipse and graph it. The first thing that we have to do now is to determine our center. Our center is the point 1, negative 2. And then we can proceed just like before. That is, identify our a squared, b squared, and c squared. The denominator here is 1. 4 is bigger, so therefore that's our a squared. So b squared is 1, c squared is a squared minus b squared. Hence, a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to square root of 3. What will be our major axis? We have to determine whether we have a horizontal or a vertical ellipse. Our A occurs with the variable Y, so therefore our major axis is a vertical line. And let us see later on what that vertical line is. We can determine that when we sketch the graph. Our center is 1, negative 2, let's say this one. We said earlier that our major axis is a vertical line and of course it has to pass through the center. So therefore this is our major axis which means that this is our minor axis. What is the equation of our major axis, the pink one? It's x equals 1. Now that we have drawn our major and minor axis, we can now get our vertices and endpoints of the minor axis. The vertices will be A units away from the center and it's along the major axis. So we go 2 up. So I will be here at 1, 0 and 2 units down. So this is negative 4. Next, the endpoints of the minor axis will just be 1 unit away from your center. So it's this point. This is going to be 2. And then this one. So hence, our vertices are the points 1, 0, and 1, negative 4. These four points will determine your ellipse. Let us now get the foci. The foci will be along the major axis and it's C units away from the center. So from negative 2, go up by square root of 3. And then you go down by square root of 3. So therefore, what is this? This is negative 2 plus square root of 3 and this point here is negative 2 minus square root of 3. The x-coordinates for both foci are 1. Their y-coordinates are negative 2 plus square root of 3 and negative 2 minus square root of 3. Here is the general form of an ellipse centered at the origin. So just like before, the general form of a curve is just an equation wherein one side is equal to 0. Let us compare this general form with the two conic sections that we have studied previously. That is for a circle and a parabola. For a circle, the equation is ax squared plus ay squared plus cx plus dy plus e is equal to 0. Notice the difference between a circle and an ellipse. For the circle, the coefficients of x squared and y squared are the same, but for an ellipse, the coefficients are different. For a parabola, only one variable appears with the exponent 2. So it's either x or y.
Let us identify the center major axis foci and vertices of the ellipse and graph it. We want to first write it into its standard form so that we can determine the center a squared, b squared, and c squared. Again, the key in converting this to its standard form is by completing the square. So we first collect all the terms involving x and all the terms involving y. All the constants on the other side. Next, we factor out the coefficients of x squared and y squared for each group. So I get 25 times x squared plus 2x. Here I factor out 4. What do we add here to complete the square? We add 1. That's 2 divided by 2. 1 and then squared. And then here we add 4. But be careful here that when you add the constants on the other side, you actually added 1 multiplied to 25, so that's 25. And then here, 4 is multiplied to 4, so that's 16. This becomes 25 times x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared times 4 is equal to 59 plus 25 plus 16 is 100. Again, our goal is to put it in its standard form. We have to turn this into constant 1 by dividing both sides by 100. So we get x plus 1 squared over 4 plus y minus 2 squared over 25 is equal to 1. We are now ready to sketch the graph. First, we have to determine our center. Our center is the point negative 1, 2. Our A squared here is 25. B squared is 4. And C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Hence, our A is 5. B is 2 and C is square root of 21. What will be our major axis here? A squared appears along the variable y, so therefore our major axis is a vertical line. This is going to be our major axis and this is our minor axis. Now that we have our major and minor axis in place, let us get the four points of our ellipse, the vertices and the endpoints of your minor axis. Our A is 5, so therefore from the center, we go up by 5 units, so this is going to be 7. Go down by 5 units, so this will be negative 3. Our endpoints of the minor axis will be two units away from the center. So from negative one, go two units. So this will be one. Two units to the left. This is going to be negative three. Therefore, this will be your ellipse. Let us write down the vertices. The vertices are the points. X coordinate is negative one and then seven. For the other vertex, that's negative 1, negative 3. For the foci, our C is square root of 21. So from the center, you go up because that's your major axis. You go up by square root of 21. So this is 2 plus square root of 21. That's the first focus. And the second focus, let's say it's here. From 2, you go down by square root of 21. So that's 2 minus square root of 21. Hence, our foci have x coordinates of negative 1. The y coordinates are 2 plus square root of 21 and 2 minus 
square root of 21. Our major axis is just the line x equals negative 1. Next, let us consider this one. Again, just like before, let us collect all the terms involving x. Factor out the coefficients of x squared and y squared, but in this case, it's just 1. What do we add to complete the square? We add 6 divided by 2, 3 squared, which is 9. But here, we add 9 multiplied to 3, which is 27. What is this? We get 3 x minus 3 squared plus y squared is equal to 0. Actually, you can stop here, but suppose that you continued. You wrote this as x minus 3 squared all over. Put this in the denominator, so that will become 1 third. What will be the graph of this one? It's not equal to 1, so therefore it's definitely not going to be an ellipse. So in general, what happens when you get like that? x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 0. Take note that if x is equal to h, this equation will just become y minus k squared over b squared is equal to 0, which means that y minus k is equal to 0 and hence y is equal to k. So this means that the graph of this is just the point hk. For our last example, let us consider this. Again, let us collect all the terms involving x and all the terms involving y. All the constants on the other side. Again, factor out the coefficients of x squared and y squared. What do we add here? We add 4 divided by 2 squared. That's 4. Here we add 1. So on the other side, we add 4 times 4, so that's 16, plus 1 times 3. So we now get 4 times quantity x minus 2 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to negative 27 plus 19 is negative 8. However, take note that this term over here is greater than or equal to 0. Because the square of a number is greater than or equal to 0. This is greater than or equal to 0 as well. However, this is less than 0. This is impossible because the sum should be greater than or equal to 0 as well. So therefore, in this case, you have no graph. Here are some exercises that you can work on. 